This is Isaware, powered by Intersoft Associates. Isaware is your connection to exploring the systems and software that power businesses like yours with expert insight, experience, and advice. Welcome back to Isaware. I am Chris Bentliff. As always, I'm joined by High Goldstoff and Abe Unger. And uh, team, we've talked before about um, the way that custom software can really help improve some efficiencies in an organization and can help improve some systems and processes. I thought we would dig more into that today and talk a little bit more about business process improvement. And I think part of doing that is to better understand what am I experiencing that would make me feel like I need to improve some business processes. We've talked about this consultant angle before, how it's really the symptoms I'm experiencing that brings me to having a conversation sometimes. So hi, what are some symptoms I'm experiencing where I know there's some processes that are broken down here? I don't know how to fix them or even what the problem is, but what could I be experiencing? Well, one is um, I've got a bunch of systems and I'm not getting any valid data out of them. It's hard to get data out of those systems. So that's certainly, you know, it would be one, you know, regular symptom. And the other is uh, I'm sure I can do things more effectively and more efficiently. I just don't know how. Uh, so th- those, are, those are two general, those are two general areas. Abe, do you think that they show, those things kind of show up in redundancies or, uh, tripping over each other or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. as, as we talked about before, a lack of a single source of truth where data mismanagement is coming through, or what am I experiencing in my day to day where I can see this thing shining at me like a big red light, but I've maybe gotten so comfortable with the discomfort that I'm not even realizing it. Sure. It, it, it is. One of those is that you're looking for some data and it's taken an awfully long time to get that, or you've got a lot of people who've got to communicate and work together to get you information that if they all have, and it's all in a shared environment, should be straightforward to get. So you're dealing with a lot of different divisions or different departments where you're talking to people, or even if it's in the same department, you know, this one is in in his world and he's in his other world and the two of them talk together and all of a sudden start putting together data. So you're asking for something and it's taking a lot of manpower and a lot of time to get something done where it seems like it should be quicker than that. You should be able to, at, the, at your fingertips, you know, click a button and get a report. And you wouldn't have to go ahead and start analyzing and working through data with multiple people to get that. So it would feel to you like I should be able to get this quicker. I should be able to get this in a more readable or more accurate format. And I can't because I'm dealing with different divisions or different departments trying to put this data together for me. Uh, and, and also what you have is you have different you know, organizations or departments within a company Um, they're kind of in a, they're kind of in a silo, Mm -hmm. you know, they have this silo and they're, you know, they care about what they, what they have, not necessarily what somebody else needs, uh, and what they have that someone else can use effectively and that someone else may not know what's available. So you've got these silos, uh, you know, which, you know, people kind of, you know, put their head down, um, uh, inertia is a really strong force Mm -hmm. and wherever you have those kinds of situations, there's certainly a situation to do something, uh, whether that's simply create a data warehouse, whether that's uh, simply have the two application silos talk to each other. Um, but there's got to be a need if tangentially they one needs some of the other's information to you know to do their job more effectively. You know those two those two silos should be talking together. They should become a larger silo, you know, kind of like a village. That's a really great uh, analogy or illustration. If I'm having trouble communicating just in a you know professional human level with somebody else because we're tripping over each other, we're in different business units, we're, uh, there's too much opacity between what we're trying to do, I can almost take that experience and, and equate it to a data and say, well, then obviously the things you're working on, you're going to have that kind of friction, you're going to have that kind of um, disparity uh, between the two. So that really helps me, I think, to better understand something's going on. You don't need to know what, but something's going on. So hi, do you have some illustrations or some examples of, uh, I know that the discovery process over at Intersoft is so is so involved and collaborative where you really start to understand what's going on. Tell me how, how you got to that point with some example where 
it's in our discussions we realized there was a real business process improvement problem here. And what are some ways that, uh, that maybe you've addressed that? I'll, I'll give you a simple one firstly, is um, just using technology. Um, again, you, you've been doing things a certain way <clears throat> and the ability to use technology to communicate better or more effectively. Uh, the ability to use technology to uh, uh, to create uh, contracts. Uh, this is something we had done for one of our clients where we market to their customers or their pr prospective customers via snail mail and via email. <coughs> and each document and each email has a link that allows them to sign up with their personal information, wh whatever that might be. Um, and they can do that really effectively. Well, somebody I know who happens to be in the real estate industry said that's a great way for contract for you know rent renewals. Uh, instead of chasing them and getting them to sign something, and you know, instead of chasing them, we can use the technology, send them a letter, send them an email, send them a text, where they can just simply you know sign online using today's technology. Can either sign literally with your finger on a, uh, you know, on an iPad or something like that, use DocuSign or something like that, where uh, they would literally impact their vacancy rate and uh, have a much lower vacancy rate, uh, get the, get the uh, leases renewed effectively without a lot of people time involved. The software can do all of this. It can know that, well, he that, that, that tenant hasn't responded and you know, and we can go through, and we can communicate to every lessee in the building. For example, if an apartment has a husband and a wife, you know, we can communicate to both of them. Either can sign, can sign the lease. So that's just taking technology and making the whole process better. Letting the people who would go out and send those letters and follow up with phone calls and and what have you perform much more high value, you know, work. You know, which has which can have a real, you know, much a different impact on the business because this thing would kind of run itself, you know, kind of like a like, kind of like a bot that would go out and do that. So that, that's that's one. No, those are two real simple examples of using technology. Just you know, taking the next step to what you do and then just injecting a little bit of technology and a little bit of creativity into how you're using it. One of the things I I really like about what you shared, hi, is. Uh, you see it at work somewhere else. Abe, we talked about this in a previous episode about integrations where we said, look, every time you buy something online, you don't know it, but you're connecting an API to something else. So we've we've explored how it's elsewhere in your life, you're experiencing these things. And I love the idea of seeing something at work and saying, oh, this is really slick. This could really apply to my organization. DocuSign is an example of that where you know, maybe you are an organization that needs to have a lot of signatures and it's because you got involved with a loan or a home purchase or something, you saw, oh, wow, I didn't even know this was possible. This is a great idea for me to, to dive into this. How much, um, how much, Abe, do you feel like organizations or, or leaders in organizations should be uh, proactively thinking about business process improvement? And how much should they be asking someone like yourselves or someone else in their organization, hey, keep an eye out on ways that we can better improve our uh, processes. Should this be something that's a part of kind of the habits of the organization or is it in your mind so reactive that that's when you have a better opp uh, opportunity to understand your needs when you're starting to hit that friction? Yeah, you, you wanna always look into those kinds of things. You wanna keep that in the back of your mind at all times simply because as you get used to things, uh, you know, we have users, many users of many systems who find ways to do their jobs slowly, even using an existing system, just because they need to get their jobs done and they get used to it, rather than thinking of, well, maybe there's a better way of doing this, either using the existing system or adding something to it so that I can do my job better and quicker um, and not have to jump through all of those hoops. So that thought should always be in the background and that should definitely be something that's discussed internally, externally, those conversations should continually happen because that's how you start to realize where there are improvements without actually talking to a software firm. You can talk about process internally and think about that. Yes, we can bring us in and we can always help and talk about that and look at it 
from an outside perspective and provide additional benefit as well. But even with a software firm, you, you really want to talk internally, talk to your people, talk about what are they doing? What are they busy with? We had a client who was doing processing of data where they were getting different data sources from different vendors and they did have a code, they did have process written that actually imported those files into their database. But the process of doing that was sort of a manual mapping every single time they had to read a file. In. So they had to run some program, they had to write some code, they had to do some tweaking and then bring that data in. And with working with us, we were able to build a process where we gave them a form where they can go in, create a, a template, and then process that file time and time again using that template that they built all with a graphical interface so that they didn't have to go in there and play with config files and settings and all those things behind the scenes and playing all these games to try to get the data in. This was, here's a screen, build it once, click a button, and going forward, you can use that same process month after month, week after week, whenever you get that data in. So it was something that they were doing and it was happening but it was a lot slower and more tedious. And using that software, using that piece of software that we built for them, that became quick, seamless, easy, and you, you just click a button and do it. You don't have to be busy with those details because your job is not doing and processing those individual details. Your job is, now that I have the data, let's work on that. Let's operate, let's report, let's do something with that data. Getting the data in is only a means to that end. And if you're spending a lot of time on that means, well, there are better ways to do it. That is a great uh, perspective. If you're spending a lot of time on the means, as we started a conversation on, and I was talking about, you know, redundancies and things, you talked about speed um, or kind of a slowness being one of those things that maybe what you're doing is uh, more problematic than it needs to be. Hi, I feel like there are organizations sometimes that bend over backwards to keep doing the thing that is not the right thing to do. They will create so many sort of crutches and assistance to uh, ac accommodate their inefficiencies. They'll hire extra people to do the thing that, I don't know, a piece of software could do because that's what they're used to or familiar with. What are some, I don't know, common mistakes or pitfalls or uh, areas that you see again and again and again, that if I'm a leader and I'm kind of listening to this and I'm starting to think about this in a way uh, for the first time, what should I stop doing as soon as I can so I can start thinking better uh, about ways to do these things? Well, the cause of that is strictly inertia. Mm -hmm. The job gets done, the, the, the person who's the leader may be, or the leadership may be a number of levels away from, you know, the actual inefficiencies. Uh, and and people have to, it's kind of hard to tell people how to react to that. Um, you know, employees simply want to do their job. And uh, it's really a matter of empowering the whole organization. That says, if you just think you're wasting a lot of time doing things, uh, you know, there's probably a better way to do it. Uh, an example is uh, actually last week, uh, one of our clients was getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of customer service phone calls just because they've gotten, you know, um, they've gotten immense, they've gotten huge. And customer service is a real important part of what they do. And there are certain, you know, at certain of what they provide. And that's, and they pride themselves on that. And they don't have a specific customer service department. They have, you know, staff throughout the organization that takes the calls because they all have, you know, various areas of expertise and the calls get routed around to the proper person. Anyway, they're, they're because of COVID and because people are out of the office, um, you know, they're kind of 50, 50 in and out. Um, their backlog of phone calls, you know, has grown. And somebody said, you know, we did some metrics and he goes, you know, if we, our backlog is so many calls and the average time on the phone is so-and-so and let's find some kind. We started talking about, you know, what's some of the commonality, you know, how can we do things uh, with, um, perhaps uh, doing some voice recognition on the on the on the phone call or on the phone message, not so much the phone call. And what information can we send them? Send them that would you know answer their question uh, and eliminate you know future phone calls. 
So let the staff focus on the more on the more difficult stuff, but then be able to uh, you know and be able to, to handle the easy questions you know electronically. Now you know their phone system transcribes all of that into text anyway. So we're, we're able, you know, we're, we're looking at that, seeing how we can, how we can in fact improve that process. But the point being that someone there said, this just does not seem right. And everybody in that organization is empowered to say, I think this is a problem. This is, this is what we have to do. Nobody, you know, nobody uh, feels um, that, you know, it's an affront on their management ability or anything else. If you think that there's a way to do something better, just let us know. So it's a, it's a matter of culture and, and promoting that kind of a culture as well. Because the people who do the work know where the problems are. And if you're you know, fairly high in the leadership uh, tower, you have no idea. You just know the stuff is getting done. You don't know what it's doing to turnover, morale, and everything else. I love high uh, culture of listening and asking. You make such a great point that if I'm three or four parts removed from some of the nitty gritty, the operational stuff in an organization, I might not even be aware. And if I open uh, the opportunities, maybe even, I don't know, town halls or something so that I can hear what people are experiencing, it's a great way for me to start to understand how these inefficiencies can be really wreaking havoc with my organization. And I might not, if I'm a leader removed from it, even know it. Uh, Great, great advice on that. And then just begin a conversation internally and see if you got to you have, they have to talk to someone who can, you know, give you the proper advice and then implement something if it needs to be implemented. Hi, Gold Stuff and Abe Unger from Intersoft Associates. Uh, great advice and insights on business process improvement. Um, as always, if you're experiencing symptoms and you just need to talk it through, these guys are pretty sharp. So uh, reach out and let's have a conversation. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for IsAware, and a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. IsAware is powered by Intersoft Associates, who believes the more you know about your IT, the better. Visit us at intersoftassociates.com and schedule your free consultation to talk about how custom software can help your business.